I'll just smile. I will be very soon. So uh, my topic is adherence, uh, compliance. We use terms anonymous, but both are different. They say that an important part of patient care, we discussed till now how to approach the patient and other things. They say that an important part of patient care is relationship that is built with the patients. So we have to build a relationship with the patient. That's the most important. I get patients who walk for five kilometers and they, to get a bus from there, they will walk. So you should be very careful with them when dealing with them. So that is how we have to build the relationship. And when discussing the use of medications and a care plan with patients, is it important to use terminology that is patient friendly? We have to tell them in our, their language. I speak in my language, Telugu. Patients are often termed non-compliant without a second thought, without saying, oh, you're not using medicines, you have this, that, that. So they have their own problems. We were for a training in uh, Steno Diabetes Care Center in Denmark, where we were supposed to act like a patient. So they gave us glucometer, pills, and injections, and we were supposed to do like a patient. And most of us found that it's very difficult to be a patient. So try to understand the patient. He has so many things. With that, he has diabetes. So he has, we have to understand. We have to be in his shoes. OK. Then perhaps these discussions should occur using the term adherence among the definition. The adherence is different from compliance. So what is adherence? Is to give support or maintain loyalty and to bind oneself to observance. That is adherence. And what is compliance? So they say that this is more relational term than comply. Complying means it to conform, submit, or adapt as required or requested. It means you're ordering something. Using the term adherence implies that there was an agreeable discussion. So you between you and the patient, you're having a discussion, and both of you are agreed. When the patients play a role in their health care, they should share ownership of the decisions, which has the potential to increase adherence. So you give, as we talk till now, discussing with them is the most important. Spending time is the most important thing. Adherence is a more positive, should be positive, proactive behavior, which results in a lifestyle change by the patient who must follow a daily regime, such as diet, exercise, and medication. So this is compliance. <laughs> this I wanted to show you. This is a patient. He came after 20 years. I am very happy. He, first I saw him in 2000, and he came after 23 years. And he's still using my medication without anything. So he's very compliant, but he's not adherent. So for 20 years, he's using my prescription. But he didn't understand he should come for follow-up and other things. So my simple thing is simple and smile. Simple is simplifying the regimen characteristics. We have to simplify the treatment and imparting knowledge that we have to give them education, modifying the patient beliefs, then patient communication. That's what we discussed till now, leaving the bias and evaluating adherence. We have to, have to add, see whether he's using or not the medication. And uh, what are the simplifying the regimen characteristics? Adjusting timing, frequency, amount, and dosage. Some of my patients go very early morning to the fields to work as a laborer. So we have to adjust them, the treatment. And for them also, we have to give diet, which is not uh, normal. And matching to patients' activities of daily living and using adherence aids such as medication boxes and alarms. We have to make them remember that they have to take the medication. And most of the patients say that doctor is very busy. He is not able to spend time. So you have to reduce on your part. You shouldn't be too busy. Okay? Why is a doctor always calm? They have a lot of patients. They have to see a lot of patients. But that's the thing, not the thing. We have to reduce our burden and their time. So importing knowledge, discussion with the physician, nurse, or pharmacist. Patient education is the most important thing. Distribution of written information or pamphlets and assessing health education information on the web. Uh, we discussed till now the problems with web. It has both, both the advantages and disadvantages. And uh, if you want to make your treatment easy, fixed dose combination. I know when Lucorate was introduced, everybody was saying, how can you give both the drugs together? But it became very well accepted because 
is compliant, increases the compliance and adherence also. So this is a study done clinical benefits of fixed dose combinations, translated improved patient compliance and uh, combinations things are also available. I'm not against anything, but you have to see the patient's condition and use insulin. And some people, basal bolus may be difficult. So we have to see the patient. We have to individualize the patient and do it. And this is the conclusion, combination pharmacotherapy. And, uh, and uh, education is the treatment for diabetes. This is a statement by Iliad P. Jocelyn. I was in uh, his institute, Jocelyn Institute in Boston, and I got trained also. They say that I, and I collaborated with three of my friends, one from UK, she is a general practitioner, and uh, another from Australia and from US. They say that we have to educate the patient. Wherever you are, you have to make them understand what's their problem. And I always take class every day to my patients. And I talk to them with the explaining so many things like plate method. And whatever the weather possible for you, you talk to them. And if you can talk to them with a group for 30 minutes, they will be very happy. They think that they spent half an hour with the doctor. So try this. I do it every day. I discuss. Even if I have five patients, I will talk. Okay. So talking to the patient and educating them is the most important thing. So we, I used so many methods to educate. We conducted literary camps and uh, po poetry uh, these com uh, competitions and story competitions, song competitions to educate the patient. We do so many things to educate the patient. And uh, next thing is modifying patient belief, assessing perceived susceptibility, severity, benefit, and barriers. We have to understand them, rewarding, tiring. You should always compliment them because we all love compliments. So when someone achieves HbA1c, we should compliment them. And patient family communication. This is very important. You should talk to your patient's family, your spouse or his kid, whoever comes, you should tell them that his father, your father needs more attention. You should remember him, remind him about the medication, including patient's decisions and sending reminders via mail, telephone, telephone convenience of care, schedule appointment, home visits, family support, and counseling. These are all the things which increase the adherence. And till now, they discuss about the bias. Patients have so many bias, like uh, insulin usage and uh, other things, and evaluating adherence. So particularly during insulin, you have to check the patient how she's taking. Last uh, week, I have a patient. He started using insulin, but uh, not under control. So what we did was, we checked that, and she was taking a wrong way. She's just putting the syringe and pushing. And <laughs> during uh, uh, when pin pens came, there are people who didn't uh, open that uh, cap on the needle, and they started injecting. So we have to tell them, uh, show them how to do that. And the self reports. And sometimes I check how many units she's taking and how many units remaining. So we have to do that. And pill counting, like uh, sometimes we may see, particularly these are all things when you are doing with multiple medications. You have to see whether, because they have so many medications and my patients are not educated. So I have to tell them, spend time with them. And insulin, we till now we discussed about insulin. Explain some people need insulin like specs. I tell my patients, because most of them are uneducated, so I tell them we are all sitting together. Some people need spectacles, some people don't need specs. So you, if you need specs, you can't see if you don't wear specs. So you may need insulin. And first, from the beginning, if you educate the patient, insulin is a part of the treatment, then it will be easy. Try to give the first dose. You give the first dose. And I was in Jocelyn when there was an educator who takes insulin for herself, injects herself, because it will be easy for the patient. Oh, doctor is taking, then it's not. I, I don't advise that, but it's easy to and show the people who are already using. If someone is using, you take them. And, and particularly pregnant women, they will be very motivated. They want a good baby. So you show them they are taking three or four times insulin. and uh, and. Uh, they will be motivator. And uh, about needles, the first problem thing is needles. They don't use it. It's supposed to be used for once only. But they will go on. There are people who use it for one month also, even after education. That's the thing. With the new year pens, once I tried for my patient, 
I asked her to close her eyes and I gave her the injection with the Novo pen or something, whatever maybe. And she didn't even perceive the pain. So we have to give them. Fear is the most important thing. Once you leave that fear, they will be very happy and they would like to continue it also. And assure them in next visit how they are taking, where is it, and what are the problems. And congratulate them for their victory. Should be, we should be very happy. We should celebrate. And this is about insulin, and we discussed already. So these are the things we have to remember that patient education is the most important. And simplifying treatment regimens to simplify as much as possible, and maximizing, minimizing the treatment cost. Cost is a very important thing. And they may say that my patients they are very poor laborers. They say that initially give me whatever the best possible, but after some time they will realize it's expensive. So you have to remember that. Cost is an important factor. Then early follow-up visits and short-term treatment goals. You, they, say, they say that if you visit them more or they visit you more, compliance will be. And reminder programs like calling them or something like that. So you should always do this. And we should educate them properly. What makes you think you got your medications mixed up with the, your wives? Because I see people both will be taking together medicines. And the next thing is smile. I always believe smiling is the best thing. Before you put on a frown, make absolutely sure there are no smiles available. I will be very sad if I shout with my patients. So try to smile with your patient. And every time you smile at some time, someone, it is an action of love. A gift to a person, a beautiful thing. This is saying by Mother Teresa. And these are the benefits of smiling. Smiling makes you attractive. Smiling relieves stress. Smiling elevates mood. Smiling is contagious, and smiling boosts your immune system. Smiling lowers your blood pressure, and there are studies where it's shown that laughter improves blood sugar control also. I use that, and uh, smiling makes you look younger. This is for women. If you tell, oh, you smile, you look younger, then everybody will smile. Smiling makes you seem successful, and smiling helps you to stay positive. Here, we should remember that if you smile with your patient, you will be more successful. There are people who come to see us only because no one smiles at them at home. You try to smile with them and they will be very happy. And we did this laughter therapy in diabetes. We and Dr. Sanjay Kalra, we wrote an article where we found that laughter improved diabetes control and compliance of the patient. And we did one, uh, I wrote an article, gelitology or laughter therapy as an adjuvant manager. So if you laugh, patient will have more compliance. They, they will like us, you will be liking your friend who will be always laughing, right? So if you doctor laughs, they will definitely come back to you. Uh, yesterday also one lady said, I like you because you are laughing, okay? So I'm not saying laughter is not all alone, but with the treatment part. So integrating humor in healthcare relationship. Humor is not used in solo, but must be instead be integrated in relationship with healthcare team. We should integrate that. Sharing humor leads to a sense of being together, close and friendly. It also promotes positive communication therapy. Humor must be employed in moderation with a careful consideration of the patient's social. You should joke according to their social cultural background and use it judiciously. Humor has favorite on both professionals and patients. The trust must be established for humor to reap its positive health benefits. So this is, we laugh together with my patients. And I always uh, have fun with my patients, try to do that, and it will definitely improve compliance. Compliance can be improved with simple, I told you, S-I-M-P-L-E. Thank you very much for a patient hearing.